Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Backgammon is beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. Now here I am on XG and I have set up a back game position and that's what we are going to talk about in this short video. Now I should start by saying that back games are very complicated and this video is by no means comprehensive. I'm just going to point you in the right direction and give you some things you should be thinking about. If you want a wider study on this, Alex Ashagian has just written a book study on back games, so definitely worth checking that out. But hopefully this video will give you some insights into some of the things to bear in mind if you enter these back game doubling scenarios. So have a look at this position. White is on roll. So is it a double? Is it not a double? Um, should green take? Should green pass? So what do you think? Feel free to pause the video and reflect for a moment. Okay, so I can tell you that this is a double and it is also a pass. And it is a sizable pass. It will be a blunder to take this as green. Now, despite the 2-1 back game being reasonably strong, here there are some things you need to take into account in this back game and pretty much every back game. Now, the most important concept I would argue is timing. So how long can green hold these anchors for? Now, firstly, you need to be behind by the number of pips of these anchors. So really green here should be behind by around 100 pips to have good timing. You can see here that green is only behind by 85 pips. Now that is really not enough. Now the issue is that green will not be able to hold onto these anchors and will be forced off them in the future. So really taking the cube is a losing proposition. Now, if we were to make green's timing better by moving that checker there from the six to the 12, then we can now see what will happen. Just hit plus plus, give it a moment, that now it becomes a sizable take because now we have given green bet more pips and green can stay around for longer. So timing really is central to understanding these positions. Another thing to look at is how numbers play for us as white. And back games are very instructive because they allow us to really consider the dice rolls going forward. Now that is something top players will do as a matter of course, but it does take practice. Now there is a dice distribution function on XG, which I've done a video on, you can check that out, but we won't go into that so much today. But what I wanted to see in this position is that white sixes do not play. So white cannot play sixes because they are blocked by green's anchors. Now that is really beneficial for white that the sixes are killed because it slows down white's position. It slows down white's bearing and it speeds green up. We don't have to play sixes when they come up on the dice, 11 rolls out of 36, but green does have to play all their numbers. So that would worsen their timing even more. So certainly consider where the spares are and consider which numbers play or don't play. Now let's make an adjustment to the position and let's give green a 3-1 back game. Now what do you think now? So before it was a pass, so what would you say is a correct cube action for both sides now? So now here we see that it is a huge take and a very big no double. It's pretty much an even game, 52%, 48%. So what exactly is going on here in this position? Why is it a no double? Maybe some people would double this, a bluff double, and maybe some people would pass, but that would be a huge mistake. And the reason why this is a no double is because now we can see how the numbers play awkwardly. So here now, if white were to roll a six or a five, look how those numbers play. 
So sixes and fives are going to force white to play these checkers, these spares, to the two point, too deep in the board and behind the anchor. And because of the potential of those checkers being played deep and the flexibility being vastly reduced, it becomes a no double. So certainly really want to consider how certain numbers play in these positions. And you can make adjustments to these positions further. So for example, we can give white the nine point here. And let's see what happens here. So it's still a no double. So even though sixes and fives do play better, of course, we can play them from the nine point. Maybe the roll after, we're going to have sixes and fives again. So you can see it's not just about this roll. It's also about future rolls coming up. So in back games, you really have to think not just one roll ahead, but several rolls ahead. Now, let's make another variation to position and give green the 4-3 back game. So what about this? So again, it's a no double. It's almost an even game. And here we can see that sixes, fives and fours all play pretty awkwardly for white. We do not want these spares to go behind the anchor. We want to keep them on the higher points. But a lot of rolls, and you can go through them, you can pause a video and count how many rolls would play behind the anchor and really damage our position. What about the 5-4 back game? Now, of course, this is quite weak. Green loses the contact in the position. It's better to be further back. Even though green gets gammoned more often with the lower anchors, it's better for contact, of course, because green can stick around for longer. Now, in this position, it's a double and a take. And a rule of thumb is when you have three points to clear, it's a good time to double. Now, that is just a rule of thumb. And of course, there are exceptions. But three points to clear in front of the anchor, then double. Now, here we can see that it's a small take and that's because green has a strong board the best three point board available the rack as roberti would call it but if we start to fiddle around with green's board giving him a weaker three point board then as you can imagine it becomes a sizable pass because of course if green does get a late hit then green needs to also be able to contain the white checker and playing these checkers too deep into the board kind of puts them a little out of play. So there's lots of things to think about in these back games. You can think about your timing. You can think about how the numbers play. There's lots of things you can do. You can move them around the checkers. You can kind of see what comes up. And of course, XG, is perfect for doing this and just experimenting with the position just to see what would happen. So for example, here, this is a borderline decision, no double take. So that means if we improved white's position, it would become a double. And if you made it worse, it would become more of a no double. So you can play around with it to your heart's content just to see the value of different um, back game scenarios and different cubing situations. Now these are also for money, so you would have to take match play into consideration as well. But these really are just a few things to bear in mind. Do check out my other videos on killing numbers. I've also got a video on danger rolls, which is really important. I'm not gonna go back into that, but it's important to kind of work out which numbers are gonna play awkwardly in advance by calculating where the anchors are. So a video is called Danger Rolls. And there are a multitude of other free learning videos and content on my channel. For a further deep dive as well into back games, 
I would recommend getting Alex Ashagian's book on back checker play. I can put a link to that in the video description. And of course, there are excellent chapters on back games also in Masterclass by Mochi, Mark Olson, and Alec Barr, and also in the classic Backgammon Bootcamp. This is just something to study further, but by learning about back games, you're learning a lot more about timing, about counting the rolls, about bearing in, about bearing off, about flexibility. It really crosses over lots of important concepts in backgammon and is therefore a great area to study. So good luck. Everyone finds back games difficult. I hope this video has cleared the air a little bit. Uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye.